speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Some words from our first reading. I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. You have to work out yourself, it seems to me, where you are on that spectrum. It doesn't just mean old men, of course, it means older women. It also means younger women too. You need to work out where you are on this age spectrum. Whether you are a people who are prophesying, as it were, or whether you are a people segueing into dreaming dreams. It seems to me we need to keep both of those things in a kind of creative tension, a prophesying and a dreaming, holding what this hope which St Paul powerfully talks about in this mix of God's Spirit amongst us. So today we come to the final Sunday of Easter tide, here for the last time the candle burns amongst us, the Easter candle which we lit on the eve of Easter Day. It's been burning proudly amongst us, the tallest thing in the church. But as we've heard the words of Scripture, especially from St John's Gospel, through this Easter season, we've been following the thought, as it were, of Christ's connection with us and the encouragement that he gave to his disciples, and through those words of scripture, of course, encouragement to you and I, as the church, the contemporary experience, and indeed the contemporary um, showing forth, as it were, of God's spirit in the world. So we heard, as we went through those scriptures, the deepening awareness of the intimacy that you and I share with God. We talked about the vine and being connected with the vine. I am the vine, you are the branches. Alone you can do nothing. Be connected in with me, in other words, Jesus was saying, and be fruitful. And then we moved a little later on to the idea of not being servants any longer, but being friends, and more importantly, being called friends by Jesus himself. So that this deeper intimacy which the Gospels expose to us and show us, and indeed lead us into an awareness of, moves from the vine to the friendship, and then the promise on the, day, the Sunday after Ascension Day, that we would not be left alone, we would not be orphaned. A Holy Spirit would come and strengthen us. And then we heard the Gospel passages of the High Priestly Prayer, as Jesus was sending you out, sending us out, sending the early disciples out, and commissioning the early church to bring this good news of God's Gospel to the people. And we also, the thread running through also, apart from this connection we have through the vine and the friendship and not being orphans and the connection we have with one another through our baptism. For not only are we baptised into Christ's death, we've spoken of this often, we are baptised into Christ's resurrection. You and I are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. So alongside this thread running through of this deeper intimacy of God, the vine, the friends, the not being orphans, and the, being, the commissioning, which is part of what we are about and the church enables us to be. Running through that was this idea of hope. And today we have the classic part of St. John's or St. Paul's letter to the Romans, about hope. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes 
for what is seen. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. So this theme of hope has been running through also our Easter season. On Easter Day, we preached about this connection of hope and love and faith. One moving from one to the other, a deepening hope expressing itself in love for our community and for our fellow human beings. And that love widening out and indeed increasing in our hearts and becoming this solid faith. This hope to love to faith, this movement that we've been thinking of during this Easter season is indeed encapsulated now for us on this Pentecost day as we give thanks to God for his spirit. Bless the Lord, my soul, we sang earlier on as our psalm response. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. There are several points within the church's year, but not often on a Sunday when we have red vestments, which we wear, and red hangings on the altar. One of the days, in fact, one of the two days, holy days, which we wear red vestments in church. The first is Good Friday, when the proclamation of the cross is made from the back of the church and coming into the body of the people. The red, of course, symbolizing the blood of Christ. And today, this bookending, as it were, from the Easter season now, proclaiming that this red now signifies a fire, a new sense of hope and newness, burning away perhaps our sadness, or burning away our fears or uncertainties, and new things coming to replace them. We are travelling lighter today because of the first Pentecost, because we can plug in through this hope and love and faith to the resources which God has ready for us. And the main resource, of course, is the power of God's Holy Spirit himself to renew us, to strengthen us, to mystify us also. This strangeness which comes through contemplating God's Holy Spirit. What is it that our small brains, as it were, can understand? Not very much, but we know it and we touch it and feel it in our own lives. That God's Spirit is not only bringing us life and love and hope, but it is that very vital stuff itself. Almost as if the blood that is flowing in our veins carries God's Holy Spirit itself to revivify our own lives, bring us new energy and hope and indeed powers this great organ in our heads and makes our brains contemplate and our hearts recognise where holiness is. So you and I as creatures of God filled with God's Holy Spirit and renewed in that promise today. You and I can continue our journey through these difficult times, moving always with hope in our hearts to this expression of love for our neighbours and to a deepening and to, indeed to a more profound faith. This is both very, very simple but also powerfully complex as these intentions of God, as it were, whirl around amongst us and indeed whirl around in the created order. You and I are partly observers of this great movement of God's Spirit, but also we feel it and touch it and know that it's happening. So today, as we dream our dreams, or perhaps as we prophesy also as sons and daughters of God, this God's Holy Spirit, which we celebrate on this feast of Pentecost, 
is a gift to us, to resource us in our lives going forward. And we pray together as these prayers will unfold amongst us. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. 